Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at 20 odd and interesting new features in macOS Sonoma. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now by my count there are more than 175 new features in macOS Sonoma and in a previous video I looked at the 10 most useful ones. But there are also a lot of little interesting features that you should know about. Let's start off by looking at reactions in FaceTime. and You can use these in other video conferencing apps as well. Not only can you access these reactions in the menu bar like this but you can also activate them by using various different hand gestures like these here. Now Safari has some great new features but one that's kind of gotten overlooked is the ability to now select multiple tabs to move them around. So I've got this tab active. If I use the Command key and click another tab and another tab notice I have all three of them. So if I go back to this original tab and click and drag I'm dragging all three and I can use that to rearrange the tabs and form tab groups and do all sorts of different things. Every version of macOS has some new things in the accessibility settings and Sonoma is no exception. Now there's a whole new little section here called Live Speech. You can use Live Speech to generate text. Now you can type here to speak Hello, and you can use this just on your Mac by itself but also in video conferencing apps. In addition you can also use personal voice to record your own voice and then use live speech to talk with it. And This syncs across devices so you can set this up on your Mac and also use it on your iPhone in the same accessibility setting. Also here in System Settings if you go to Siri and Spotlight you can set Siri to use the two word phrase to initiate things or just use one word and if you switch to that you can still use the two word phrase. Another accessibility setting you'll find is under Display and if you look under Text there's Text Size and now it takes you to a whole submenu where you can set a default text size for different apps to use. Like You can see how the Settings app is reacting to this but you can also set custom sizes for Calendar, Finder, Mail, Messages, and Notes. This will be a big deal for those that like to make text a little bit bigger in some apps. Now Freeform has a new interesting trick. You can now drag and drop 3D files. They have to be Apple's 3D file format which is pretty standard. I'm going to drop this one here. It's a sample that Apple gives out. and Then you can have this 3D object inside of one of your Freeform boards. In the News app if you are a user of Apple News Plus you now have access to puzzles which are crossword puzzles you can play right on your Mac. And This is also available in iOS 17 and iPadOS 17. The Photos app has a few new things. In addition to pets being added to people you can now easily create shareable links for an individual photo. So I can Control click on this one photo here, select Share and then I could just use Copy iCloud link. It'll share just that one photo, provide me with a link and then I could share it with somebody else so they could just get it any way that they would get a link from you and then they can go and view that photo. There are new capabilities added to Visual Lookup. For instance for food like this I can click on the dish and it will actually give me links to recipes. And In Memories we now have the ability to add more photos to a memory. So I can click on this button here and then view all of these and I could add them. Not only could I add them but I could rearrange the order of the photos. In Spotlight Search now if you search for something that's a system setting you may actually get a switch for that setting right here in Spotlight. No need to go to the Settings app. Also if you search for a contact in Spotlight you not only get a way to go to that contact but you'll get action buttons like to be able to send a message, make a phone call or an email for that person. And if you perform a search that looks like what you want to really do is add an event to the calendar, you could do that as well. I could just click that button and I never even had to open the calendar app. In the Messages app now, when you get an audio message like this, there are two really neat new features. One is that you get a transcription of the audio message so you don't actually have to listen to it. 
But if you do want to listen to it, if you control click on the play button, you can choose to play it back at a faster speed. A blinking text cursor is just a line, but now it's got some new indicators in macOS Sonoma. If you turn on caps lock, you'll notice this little caps lock indicator under it, which is really handy so you know that you're going to be typing all caps. You'll also see it briefly there when you switch languages and when you're doing dictation. The Weather app has two new tricks I want to show you. First, when you go to Maps now, you can choose a wind layer. And the wind layer actually shows you all the wind patterns. And you can see exactly what's happening here, but also you could zoom into your local area and it will continue to show you all the wind patterns, even down to a pretty fine detail. But for astronomy buffs like me, you want to go to the lunar section here. It tells you lots of information like the current moon illumination, moon set, and next full moon. But if you click on it, you get even more. So you have more details there and you can move the timeline here and see exactly where the moon is going to be at a certain time. It even shows you the distance of the moon at that time. In the Home app, even if you don't actually use the Home app for controlling anything in your home, you can now go to a section of it and it's going to draw on data from your local power sources to tell you when the best times are to draw power from the grid. There's been a lot of attention on some new features and reminders, but one I don't hear much about is the ability now to go to View and switch to Column View. And then you could see your reminders in columns. There's only one column here because there's only one section. But if I were to add another section, I could then move items between columns here and have as many columns as I need and organize things that way. And also a new feature of the Notes app is the ability to take a note and make a Pages document out of it. So you can start off writing in the Notes app and then when you want to convert that to a regular Pages document to continue building it, all you need to do is go to that note and then go to File and then Open in Pages. And Now it transfers all of that over and creates a new document. So there are a ton of other new features in Sonoma. If there's a feature that I haven't named in this video or the previous one that you really like, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.